Sherman has got it again, and he's got a crease! Heading for the corner! Really nice play design here. Pin and pull with a fake screen. Flare action here to St. Ristol. These wide receivers are going out on blocks. So this accounts for four defenders from Notre Dame. These two defensive backs on the wide receivers. Outside linebacker is responsible for seeing Ristol. So he's coming down. And this safety actually come, starts coming this way with this action as well. So that's four defenders with three offensive players that you account for right there. So that's just, just a really good play design initially to spread out the defense. Furthermore, given that the run is headed this way, Michigan's leaving backside defensive uh, and unblocked this guy right here. So that means you only have these guys to account for to block. That's six on six. Those are winning numbers uh, for Michigan. So let's look at kind of the play design. Let's look at first uh, what the pullers are doing. So you have Unwinu. He's the kick block on the pin and pull here. Ruiz is the lead blocker coming through this gap here for one of these gentlemen coming down flowing to the play. He's going to pick up the first one. And then another key block is Bredesen getting out to the second level, trying to pick up uh, probably this linebacker here. So those are the roles there for those guys. So you see already a good kick out block here. Ruiz is here to pick up this linebacker. Bredesen is here, but the safety is overflowing to this play. So this gap is really open for Charbonnet. Let's look at the rest of the blockers here for Michigan. So given that you have pullers, you need some guys on the front end to cave down. And also Notre Dame helps this by slanting away from the side of the play. So that helps uh, Eubanks seal his guy off. It technically doesn't help um, help Mayfield here on the play side. This defense tackle actually comes through, but he doesn't make a play, thankfully but it helps Runyon as well backside here to seal off. So they all do a good enough job. Like I said, 95 is actually here, but he doesn't react quick enough. Eubanks gets enough of his guy, and that allows for this formation here. Again, here's your kick out, here's Ruiz, and here's Bredesen if needed. He is not. Given that the safety you see is only now reacting this way, that's a lot of room for Charbonnet to get upfield. He gets about 35 yards for a big pickup, sets up uh, Michigan's first points of the game. Well, you got to get the ball out of the perimeter a little bit. Huge pickup from Haskins here. Uh, main thing to look at on this play are these linebackers who flow really hard this way based off of the action from Bredesen on his pull. So they're thinking this is going to be another uh, pin and pull. So they're trying to get to uh, this run lane here uh, that we kind of saw where Charbonnet went on the pin and pull play. In reality, it's a trap, and they're in big trouble for doing so. So the key action here is that Unwinu and um, and Runyon are actually getting to the second level here. Their job is to get to these linebackers, and Bredesen's pull is not to get to the second level. He is pulling to pick up this defensive tackle. So Unwinu's going to chip and go. Uh, and Bredesen is just going to hit him, actually, and when he's just going to release freely. Um, so that's really the key here is this trap, these linebackers getting out of position, and these two offensive linemen from Michigan on Winu and Runyon getting to that second level. So here's a really nice pop here from Bredesen to pick up that. Uh, these two linebackers are in trouble. They <laughs> on Winu and uh, Runyon just have to kind of be there. They don't even really have to pick up the blocks. And then Ruiz has the job of just caving down this defensive tackle. He does. You got Eubanks and Mayfield on uh, the right side of the offensive line, just one-on-one -on -one blocks. They're doing a good job here. So this is the main action to pay attention to. Uh, Ruiz does a good job forming the left side of this hole here. Uh, there is a play to be made by this backside defensive end, and Haskins just says, sir, no thank you. I'm not going to do that today. Um, really, really, really phenomenal for him to just shrug off a captain. I think that's Khalid Kareem. I think it's his name. He was, I think, a former Michigan target, but really NFL-bound defensive end, and he just shrugs him off. And then really good strength at the end of the play here to get an extra five or six yards uh, with a guy draped on him. So really good strength, uh, really good play call, and well executed. Notre Dame sends the house and Michigan response with really well executed play here on a pit and pull. So, so you got this guy off the edge, these two defensive end, defensive tackle, linebacker on a blitz here, and then these three guys on the backside of the play. 
Um, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that you're sending right away. And then you also have this guy to account for. Everyone else is matched up on the outside. So tough blocking assignment, especially with how much Notre Dame is bringing right away. Um, the guy who deserves probably the most credit here is in Winyu. So he's um, on the backside here, and he's on the backside of the block, uh, you know, accounting for Ruiz's pull. So Ruiz is pulling as well as Bredesen. Bredesen is uh, the kick guy, so he's going to take this outermost edge defender here. And Ruiz is tasked with leading the way, getting to the second level, which will be this linebacker. Uh, so and when you really has to crash down here, but not only does he have to deal with the, this defensive tackle coming across his face, but also this linebacker blitzing. So and when he does a really good job filling this gap and Ruiz holds on for a second because he notices this blitz and he's like, hey, man, this is a lot to deal with. Uh, so he stays for a minute and it's definitely the right way to go. Um, you know, and when he gets blown back because he's dealing with two guys, but uh, he's got it. So uh, that allows Ruiz to actually get to the second level here on his delayed pull here and good patience from Charbonnet. So look at the rest of the line. So on play side, you got Eubanks. Eubanks and Runyon both caving down here. They form a really nice uh, side of the hole uh, here. They cave these guys down really well. Um, again, I mentioned the kick from Bredesen. You have this delayed pull from a Ruiz that gets home. Uh, backside, we already went over uh, and win you. I would like to see Mayfield do a little bit better on the right side, kind of holding up these three guys. They almost make a play here. Um, but... Um, you know, this is a nice hole here uh, that is formed by the play side guys as well as in when you Ruiz does a good job waiting until he finds the lane here. And it's good patience by Charbonnet. You know, he, he waits for Ruiz to actually get there and then it's uh, six points. So it's a well executed play. No completed passes yet for Patterson, but Haskins has been the weapon and he's in the secondary. Inside zone for Haskins, who hurdles a guy, which is really fun. Something to look at right away, the common theme all night, was really that the defenders for Notre Dame are terrified of the sideline. So the safety is going to work outside of St. Ristol on his block, and also this linebacker is going to go crazy to the sideline. This linebacker's on a blitz. So really, given the, the action is all to the outside plus this blitzer, um, there is nothing in the middle of the field except for this guy that Haskins is going to hurdle. So this is just a common theme to keep in mind on all of these runs. You see both the safety is now edged off and this linebacker completely removed himself. And that's a big lane for Haskins here. So let's look at the blocking assignments here for Michigan. Eubanks on the backside is just going to go out like it's a route just to get his guy out of there. This corner is irrelevant as well. So that accomplishes that on the backside. Uh, you're going to have both in Winyu and Mayfield kind of crashing down here. They're going to leave this defensive end unblocked. They're just going to ensure that this guy is accounted for. That's because uh, Ruiz is working to the second level, ideally picking up this linebacker, reacting to the play. Finally, on the play side, you have this linebacker coming down on a blitz. So that leaves Bredesen to pick him up, which he does really well. And then you have running on the backside with a kick on this defensive end. So pretty straightforward zone blocking here. Notable things are Bredesen do doing a good job getting the blitzer to cave inside. Good double here. Obfuscated? Is that the word? Obfuscated by the raindrop here. And Ruiz working to the second level. Runyon's doing fine here. So everyone picks up their blocks really well. I think uh, Ruiz should get the most credit here on his kick out, though the linebacker, again, was just heading for the hills for whatever reason. Um, but I think it's impressive to, to ID the blitz really well. Um, you know, it's just execution at its best and taking advantage of uh, the tendencies of the linebackers in second level to vacate. And then finally, the only guy that Haskins has to deal with, he decides to go airborne. Maybe not the most effective, but it's pretty cool. True Wilson in the backfield is Patterson. It's to throw again on third down. Now scrambling. Fires on the Nice catch from Sainer still here on a little bit of a scramble here from Patterson. So Notre Dame is bringing a bit of pressure. They're bringing this uh, linebacker here. You got this guy off the edge, 44 as well. Uh, they're going to be running an interesting uh, stunt here, actually. 44 is going to cut a little bit to his right. Same with this defensive tackle. This defensive end, I think number 95, is going to try to loop around here. Uh, and then you'll have this, uh, I think, outside linebacker, uh, coming as well so that's kind of the 
the pressure that you'll see. Um, so here's the stunt. You got 44 coming across here. You had the defensive tackle uh, coming into Bredesen's lap here. And here's your looper. Uh, your blitzer here is going to be accounted for by True Wilson. So let's look at the stunt here. Uh, they do actually a really good job. Bredesen is, is dealing with the guy who crossed his face. Ruiz is dealing with uh, his guy. Watch this pass off between Ruiz and Wenyu though. Really nice job here. 44 is accounted for now by Ruiz. And Wenyu has uh, this long looper accounted for as well. So the main issue uh, that we have, uh, and again on, on the right side, uh, this is picked up well from True Wilson. And on the right side, Mayfield does well. Uh, so main issue here is running and watch him get kind of put on some skates into the lap of Patterson uh, and you can't really have that so routes for Michigan uh, you have a uh, basic crossing route here from Eubanks something deep here from Ronnie Bell I can't tell it's kind of an inside release maybe a seam route and you have this angle route uh, from St. Ristol and then I think you have a post route from uh, Nico Collins here at the bottom of your screen um and so the eyes for Patterson were looking at this angle route here. I think he got a little bit spooked from uh, running, getting pushed into his lap. So that's why he decides to bail here. Uh, good job by St. Ristol to follow the route, um, continue it across uh, the field, you know, follow, giving a realistic option for Patterson as he goes to his right. Ball could have been thrown a little bit better. St. Ursula does a good job adjusting to it and picking up first down. Two back look. Eubanks, the tight end back there, is a blocker for Charbonnet, but Patterson led by the tight end around the edge. Arc Reed keeper for a big gain here from Patterson. Uh, main things to take a look at are this boundary cornerback, this defensive end, and this linebacker. So this defensive end is coming down the line to try to force a keep give for Patterson. This linebacker is coming to the line of scrimmage. He should be accounting for Patterson on this keep that this defensive end forces. Uh, and his responsibility is Patterson. And this boundary corner uh, is important just because he reacts as well. One of the key blocks to this play is uh, McCune here on the outside. Um, so you'll notice all three of them are reacting to Charbonnet. Uh, and that is not how the play is drawn up. So Patterson keeps it. That's a big, big no-no for all three of those guys or at least for two of those guys. Um, so the blocking assignments for Michigan, you got a double team here on the play side between Bredesen and Runyon. Uh, Unwinu and Ruiz are double teaming here before Ruiz releases to the second level. Then you just got one-on-one -on -one blocks on the back side. So everyone here doesn't really matter. It's mainly all about Eubanks going this way, um, appropriately getting this guy to come down the line and uh, you know, this scrape exchange is really what should blow up this play. It's more of a misplay by this linebacker and by this boundary corner. Um, so thankfully, you know, the scrape exchange is, is not executed appropriately. Uh, that really sets up McCune on his block. He actually doesn't even really need this block. This guy is so out of position, he doesn't need that. And then you got Eubanks coming out here. You'll see DPJ is engaged with his guy on the outside. So that springs us for a big gain. I'd like to see Eubanks pick up a bigger block here, either completely erasing this guy or running past and picking up uh, the guy who ultimately makes the tackle here. Uh, but even so, big gain uh, towards the goal line here. Haskins, first free, break and tackles into Notre Dame territory, and they'll find... Really nice pickup on Haskins here on a split zone play. Uh, one thing to point out here is that DPJ's motion here uh, shifts the responsibilities from this corner to become the deep safety, and this safety now becomes a corner he is picking up DPJ. So this isolates this cornerback in a safety role, which is important for this play. Uh, another thing that's important is this linebacker is blitzing just outside of Nguyenu here. That's going to be relevant for Eubanks coming across. He's going to pick up this block as well. That'll help vacate the center of the field here. Um, so you'll see here's the safety coming down on DPJ, here's the corner, here's that uh, linebacker that blitz, and you got Eubanks accounting for him. That leaves this open space with only a cornerback to deal with for Haskins. Let's look at uh, the kind of the main blocks here on the right side of the line. So you got one-on-one -on -one block here from Mayfield. He does a really good job on his kick. One-on-one -on -one block from Nguyenu. He does really well. I mentioned this pull from Eubanks across the formation. Uh, so all those guys do a really good job that forms this uh, right side of the hole for Haskins. And then the left side uh, does potentially even better. You got one-on-one -on -one blocks between 
uh, McCune and running here. Running gets a pancake here. Uh, probably block of the play is between Bredesen and Ruiz. They really shove this guy backwards. Uh, this linebacker comes up and Ruiz finds him uh, for his second block on the play here. He gets off of this double team into the second level, and then this linebacker uh, is irrelevant here in the wash. So this helps form this side of the hole uh, while I covered the blocks here that opened the right side. So again, they get really good movement on the double. Number 40 is in the wash here, and now you got this really nice path for Haskins. Haskins uh, shoves this <laughs> cornerback into the ground. Uh, one thing to look at here as this play develops, uh, DPJ does get away with a little bit of a tug there. And right here, you know, that's something that probably should have been called. It, it springs Haskins for a little bit more yards. Um, he's asking for, he doesn't get it. So, uh, it's a plus one for the refs there. Um, but Haskins picks up quite a few yards here at the end of the play again. Really not sure what the RPO here is for Patterson. So he pointed out to Haskins, he pointed out over to this way. So he's expecting a blitz off the edge here, which does actually come. So uh, Haskins abandons any sort of run fake here for this blitz. Um, but Patterson still keeps on the fake. I'm not sure exactly why, given that the route isn't out here uh, for DP. DPJ um, maybe is to keep this guy home but on the route combination um, I'm not sure I think maybe it's a misplay here from Nico Collins who's supposed to be coming on a uh, on a slant I'm not exactly sure but Patterson holds this fake for a while um, Notre Dame is sending the house and uh, it gets home right as Patterson is throwing the ball so the run blocking is a double team here on the defensive end Double team between Bredesen and Ruiz here before uh, releasing to the second level. Um, actually, sorry, uh, you're going to have Runyon releasing to the second level here on this uh, defender. And then, uh, again, double team here. Um, so I, I don't really understand it because you have this guy coming on a blitz that's completely unaccounted for. Uh, you have this edge defender that Eubanks has to get as well as this blitzer. You're dealing with a lot of pressure. Not a lot of upside of, of running into that at the goal line here. Um, so again, this guy is completely left unblocked as running gets uh, to this defender who's just kind of sitting there. It's kind of a wash here, but there is pressure getting to this side as well. So fortune get this playoff. Not sure what Collins is doing here. This is really conflicting on this route. Given that Patterson was hit, the throw is a little low underthrown. Really good job. Uh, by DPJ to dig this out, get his hands under it. Blow, body blow type of approach. Patterson, a play action on first down, and zips it wide open. Sanisville makes a move. Sanisville is still on a play action pass here. Uh, Michigan is keeping six in for pass protection. Notre Dame is only sending one, two, three, and four on the pass rush. Patterson has plenty of time here on the play action and delivers a nice ball here to St. Ristol. Uh, the routes looks like an outside release kind of seam route here for uh, Nico Collins. You have this inside release. I don't know what the actual name for it, but it's just kind of an out route a little bit deeper. Uh, after this inside release from St. Ristol. And then on the outside here, you got DPJ on an in route. Um, and you'll notice the eyes here for uh, Patterson all the way are mainly on this uh, backer here. If he uh, follows St. Ristol, that will open up DPJ. And then I think the second read after this would be, okay, if this guy follows this way, then look at the safety. If he comes up on DPJ's route, then you'll have Nico Collins deep. But since the first read here decides to go this way, that opens up uh, St. Ristol here on this throw. So he notices that, and boom, his eyes are here on St. Ristol's route, and he delivers. Uh, so a bit of a bust here from uh, Notre Dame, but eyes were in the right spot for Patterson, delivers a nice ball uh, and good catch and good run after the catch from St. Ristol to maximize the yards here. Nice little a stutter move to pick up an extra couple. Oh, Patterson pump breaking. Why not throw to the end zone? Collins! Fade to Nico Collins for a touchdown here. Let's do all of these all the time. Um, Notre Dame to only sending four on the pass rush. Michigan is keeping a small army here for pass protection. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven here to protect. And only three routes here for 
uh, Michigan will cover the routes next, actually. So uh, no issue, especially with a quick throw. Uh, actually, it could be called for hands to the face here against 53. Uh, but you got two guys per defensive lineman here uh, for Michigan outside of left tackle here, Runyon. Um, but notice how you got four defenders here for Notre Dame doing absolutely nothing. You could say these two guys are denying St. Ristol's route, maybe, uh, but it's just kind of a poor defensive call, or at least a good offensive call for uh, this uh, defense that, that Notre Dame is in right now. So routes for Michigan. Uh, I think it's probably a little like hitch fade or something, given uh, Patterson's action here. We'll cover that on the next one. But you got a fade here uh, from Nico Collins. You got kind of a shallower cross here from St. Ristol, and then a deeper cross from DPJ uh, towards the back of the end zone. So this play all the way is going to Nico Collins, but you do have two options crossing at the top of the screen. So Patterson all the way is ensuring, you know, one on one coverage. He's probably seen on this. Oh, I should back up here. I don't know why it did that. But on this little shoulder fake that he gives, he's probably saying, okay, did he react to that? It looks like Nico Collins got a step from that action, uh, and that frees up space for the fade. So throwing up to a 6'4 guy like Nico Collins, that's going to work out most of the time. It did here, and it's touchdown. Wilson busts the tackle into the secondary. Has some blockers. Cuts it back. Drew Wilson with a hell of a touchdown here in split zone. So uh, the idea of a split zone is to take 84, uh, look like he's on an arc read. So try to make it look like an arc read to mess with the edge defenders here. Uh, but really he's blocking the edge defender and that allows uh, True Wilson up the middle here. So that's kind of the uh, key is to uh, make the edge defenders hesitate thinking they're getting red again on an arc read. Um, but really, that isn't what we're dealing with here. So looking at the uh, backside blocks, you got Hayes one-on-one -on -one here. He does fine. And when you does well here, Ruiz is getting to the uh, backside linebacker here. And then Bredesen is going to deal with this blitzing linebacker as well. So they all do a really good job. This forms this uh, right side of the line really uh, well, especially good job by Bredesen to ID that um, that blitzing linebacker and pick him up. So no issues on the right side here. You see really good movement uh no issues at all the front side is where things are a little bit complicated so Runyon has this guy uh one-on-one -on -one initially uh number 14 is coming on a blitz right here so what Runyon's going to do he's going to initially engage with this defensive tackle fall off and pick up this blitzer which i think is the right call traditionally without the safety blitzing i think McCune is supposed to pick up number 42, right? He's supposed to be uh, delayed by the read here. Patterson's eyes are on him, freezing him in place, and that's going to make this kick block really easy for McCune. Complicates things because right now, here's Runyon. He's going to deal with this block. McCune has to ID that this is the guy I need to block now, and that will free up True Wilson. He doesn't. He leaves 95 in the hole, and that puts True Wilson in a bit of trouble. Luckily, Wilson's got some wiggle and can make this guy miss. Uh, on the outside here, you got Tariq Black picking up a nice block on number eight, and then a wild Shea Patterson runs out. He doesn't really pick up any blocks, but cause enough chaos here for Wilson to cut back and pick up a nice touchdown. Second half against Penn State, and I think it could be a real starting point for Michigan in the second half of the season. Wow, look at this. And now... St. Ristol's first career touchdown here on an RPO uh, pin pull action. So interesting action. You, you take the center and the guard on pin pull here and uh, one on one block here, one on one block here, uh, same backside as well. And the conflict player here is this linebacker. If he falls back into pass coverage, then you have six on six uh, for blocking here on the run to True Wilson. Otherwise, if he's coming up in a run support flowing this way, uh, it'll open up a slant from St. Ristol across the middle of the field in this area vacated by the linebacker. So the, the linebacker obviously comes up, and that makes the decision easy for Dylan McCaffrey. So thing I don't like is right now is pretty clear that this linebacker is reacting to the run, right? You're at a numbers disadvantage if you hand off, so you're not handing this ball off. You know that this will... Uh, be open. So at this point, I think McCaffrey should be pulling this fake. He, he's still holding on to the fake while reading it. He's already read it. So now I think his eyes are shifting over here to ensure uh, that on this route, 
uh, from 83 here uh, that this defensive back follows him out and that it's actually man-to-man and that this slant will be open. Um, so maybe that's why he's taking a beat here, but I think it allows a little bit too much time for the safety uh, to come across the middle of the field. So I think he should be throwing the ball now. Instead, he's only thinking about throwing the ball now. That allows this deep safety to come up and kind of hit Sainer still pretty hard. And he actually hesitates a little bit. If he doesn't hesitate at all, it might be a pick. So he's throwing right now. If this guy is fast enough, he can jump in front of this and pick. He hesitates a little bit. That gives enough time for St. Ristol to catch uh, and spin away. So it is the right read. I think it could have been a little quicker. The rest is just St. Ristol making a really nice play, evading two tacklers, juking another, and picking up his first career touchdown. So hoping to see more from him. Uh, Pretty exciting stuff.